We were going to be filming at 41st, but we are in contract on the wholesale of that closing tomorrow and Davis is hung up in permitting. So we thought we would take this time to take a trip down memory lane, show you our favorite before and afters. That's all coming up next on Flipping in Heels. Welcome back to Flipping in Heels. I am your host, Olivia Barrett, and I'm excited today because I get to show you our three favorite flips to this date, because who knows, the next one might be our favorite. So we're gonna start off with the flip in Woodland. This is flip number three. So this house was unique because it was a craftsman. It was the very first time that we had done a house of this vintage before and we really wanted to make sure to do it justice. People buy these older houses because they like the character of them. So we wanted to make sure we didn't lose that, but we wanted to somehow make it be a more modern layout. So there was a bedroom downstairs already, but no bathroom. So we tried to figure out where we can put a bathroom. There was a breakfast nook that was gonna be um, a, a great opportunity for us to convert into a master bath. However, that is where the original staircase ended. So the only way to get to the staircase to go upstairs was to go through this breakfast nook. So instead of doing something where we're adding walls and not subtracting anything, we now had to take the stairs, rip them out, and turn them around to face the front of the house. That might not seem such a big deal, but it's a huge deal because it changed it from a cosmetic flip to a structural flip. And that changes your time frame. that changes your requirements from the city, you now have to have engineered plans, you have to go through a separate planning period. We went from three months, $70,000 budget, to six months, a little over six months, with a $120,000 budget. This next one was in the city of Vacaville. All right, my partner Becky does a ton of flips out in Vacaville, but this was the first one that I was a part of. It was a really unique property because it was an three levels to it. The uh, owner had built it with a full basement to it, but had never finished it off. It was all wood everywhere. There was redwood that uh, covering the exterior of the entire house, and there was redwood in the ceilings, just really cool vaulted ceilings, windows everywhere, very, very modern look. I had never designed a modern house before. I didn't know I could do it. It wasn't really my style. So that was a challenge for me too. This house was purchased for 650,000. When we bought it, it was uh, 3,500 square feet. We had an original budget of $150,000 and uh, we expected to sell it for around a million. One of the challenges was we didn't have an open concept kitchen. And the reason why it wasn't open was because there was a chimney right in the middle of it. There was a fireplace on the lower level, basement level, the main level, and the third level. So there was no way to take out that chimney. So what we did is we put in a double-sided fireplace. That way you can see through it, but it was still there for structural purposes. Another issue we had was the electrical. We couldn't run any uh, lines to get any chandeliers or fans in any of the rooms. So what we did is we ran a little chase, um, uh, thin as could possibly be on the exterior of the redwood, and then we tried to camouflage it uh, when we restained the ceilings. The house also was not kid friendly. The upstairs was a great master retreat um, that was just fantastic for hanging out. However, it had a built-in bookshelf and I had a two-year-old at the time. And my two-year-old would have just climbed right on top of that and fallen over into the living room. So what we did is we got a glass fabricator to come and build this glass kind of plexiglass that went across so that you could still see down, but um, no, it's not a falling hazard.
And my all-time favorite is the flip on 40th Street. This was our very first big flip. We went from just doing normal flips to flipping a 6,000 square foot Georgian Colonial in the Fab 40s. We purchased this house for 1.125. We figured our budget would be around 250,000 and that we would resell for 2 million. So we had never budgeted for a big project before. Uh, we thought $250,000 and I was so sure of it. And then I started to bring all of our guys um, to give us bids on the house once we had purchased it. And half of them would not even give us bids. It was just too intimidating of a project for them. So we started to break it down by floors and we thought, well, if we can budget for each floor and then we'll add it all together. So our budget was really in flux through the whole project. We had a number of unforeseen things, which happens in those older houses anyways, but we found out that we were working with triple bricked walls, which made it very difficult for electrical plumbing and also for the fact that we had no HVAC in this entire house and had to figure out how to get it to three levels. So we had to get really creative about it. We put in dormers, we built in, in seating on the third level that served as a conduit to bring the HVAC to the second level. We just had to get really creative with it. But in the end, it worked out beautifully. What really made this house special to me was the family who sold it to us. And I was able to meet them before we started the remodel and they were able to tell me all of the amazing stories they had in this house over the generations. The husband was rumored to be a Belgian count, um, but the wife was known to be this great socialite who threw the best parties. Her nickname was Pinky because she would give pink champagne to everybody who would come into the house. So as a nod to her during our unveiling party, we handed out pink champagne to everybody who came through. That family was also able to see the house in its finished state and it really warmed my heart to be able to have them see the house and being given new life to it. Um, so that's what this one was will remain near and dear to my heart and one of my favorite flips that we've ever done. That'll do it for our trip down memory lane. Thanks for going through all of my favorite flips with me. And next week we have Davis, which is shaping up to be one of my favorite, our biggest transformation yet. Uh, we are working on our permits right now. We should be back on track next week and we'll bring it to you then. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you next week on Flipping in Heels.